All right, Sunday afternoon, the Camp Wounded Dog Workshop. Here's a little fix-it project that uh, you might find handy. A lot of times, you have an opportunity to buy something really cool, but you shy away from it because some clever-minded repurposed that decided it would look better as an electric lamp. Well, anyway, I had a chance to pick up this old W. William T. Ott double burner that somebody had converted to a uh, lamp. So I got, I got it at the right price. Problem was, there was a rod running right through it from the bottom here and up through the top. So I figured out, all right, I'm going to fix it. And this is, this is how I have done this in the past and it's a procedure that works really well. The secret to doing this and getting it to uh, look good is to cut a piece of similar material, brass, that will fit this hole perfectly. Some guys just try to solder over it or TIG weld or something like that, but I like this because you get a better product. You cut a circle that will fit right in there and then you cut a little larger piece as a backer. Now I've got a number of punches of different sizes so there's no big deal to cut that circle. So this is what I did. I cut a circle that would fit right in there and then I cut a backer piece. What you do is you pull this through the lantern or uh, stove and pull it up into place and solder it. You got to make your plug uh, first. So you got a piece of wire, cut your two pieces of brass, and then you put a little nurdle on the end of your wire. And it's got to be a fairly decent thing because you're going to put some pressure on it a little bit later. All right, there you go. See? The hard part about doing this whole thing is to bend your wire, get it down and to come out your hole. Once you got it in, you can just pull it right up into place. Now what you got to do, and this is critical, make sure that the back of this hole doesn't have any burrs on it. Um, I have a screwdriver that I repurposed as a scraper. I can get in there and pull the burrs off and then I'll put a little piece of stain, uh, steel wool over it, put some uh, flux on there and get in there and clean up the inside of this ring. That's got to be clean because you're going to be applying solder to it. So what you do after you cut your plug, make your backer piece, put it on your wire, you want to tin it so you've got solder in oh, I lost a stinking brush. What the heck? Hang on. Alright, here's one. Everybody's got their own soldering technique, so I'm not going to tell you what the best way to do this is. You figure it out for yourself. But I'm going to use a little electric gun initially. This is a pretty nice little gadget. I just bought it and I really like the way it works. I've been using bigger irons and torches, but this gives me some real good control. See, what you want to do is get a layer of solder all the way around here. And like I said, everybody's got their own pet way of doing this, so I'm not going to be real picky about how you do it. Anyway, so that's what you got. Then you fish it through and you pull it through, and I already got it in there. So there, you can see my plug. Now the reason it doesn't fit in there snug right now is because there's a buildup of solder around the shoulder. When I heat this, that solder will melt and the plug will fill the hole. So for that, I need more heat all at once, so I'm using my propane torch. 
I'm going to do this so you can see. apply a little more solder to this. Ah, stick with it. Alright. Hang on. It's never easy. Alright, it's already starting to stick. Which is good, but just to get some more solder in place, I'm going to use my little electric gun. And then I'll show you what goes on here. Come on. Heat up you, uh, $59 wonder. Alright, there you go. Now this, I'm just putting the solder on there to get the solder on there. I'm going to use my uh, torch to get it to flow. Just to be on the safe side, I'm going to put a little more flux on here. Except I lost my good brush. There we go. Get the flux in there. Fire this rascal up again. Come on, fire. There we go. I don't need quite that much heat. I just want to get the solder to flow. Now you can see as it liquefies, it creeps into the crevice between the patch and the font. Take the heat off, hold it in place until the solder freezes. If you let go too soon, it's going to fall back in your font. I cheat. Alright, there you go. It's frozen. That's it. Oh no, I got a wire sticking out of my uh, font. What am I going to do? Well, I'm going to trim it off. And then, four, I use my initial cut's going to be 400 grit paper. Oh man, that's what this thing is. You know, I never prepare when I do these videos. I, I should. There I go. finishing this. You buff it out. By the time I take the rise out from the initial problem we had with that, um, this is going to be almost almost invisible. I'm going to replate this thing so when it's replated it won't show. If you're doing this on a nickel font or something like that, what you might want to do is make your patch out of a piece of nickel from an old dead lantern. That way you don't have to re, 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 uh, replate it. But anyway, that's how you fix it. The, the thing about this kind of patch is pressure is your friend, not your enemy. Since you've got that big backer plate, pressure pushes up instead of blowing it through. Anyway, so i got to do it on this side. And then i got a little, a little bugger down here. Alright, so that's it. I'll post pictures later when I get this all sanded and buffed out the way it should be. All right, thanks for stopping the Camp Wounder Dog Workshop. Uh, try not to get any Chinese virus and die. I'd miss you guys if you didn't show up. All right, stay, stay healthy. Bye-bye. <laughs>